some bombshell news yesterday from the FTC and 48, yes, 48 different states attorneys general. Let's throw this up there on the screen. The FTC is alleging that Facebook is illegally crushing smaller rivals of the competition. Most importantly, they are calling for the spin-off of Instagram and WhatsApp, a move that Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg has called, quote, existential for Facebook. So there's a lot going on here. Mm -hmm. Recall that Facebook acquired Instagram in back in 2012 for about $1 billion. And I want to try and present this all fairly. At the time, Instagram had like 10 employees. They had no money, no plan to make money. And they made a, they bought them for a billion. And everyone was like, oh God, here we go. Tech bubble all over again. Turned out to be probably one of the smartest business decisions made in modern, you know, at least in the modern tech acquisition space because Instagram is now a multi-billion dollar business. There's a lot of synergy between them and Facebook. And now it's not a competition. At that time, Facebook photos, if you'll all recall, you know, those people who are my age, like people would post like 3,000 photos and everyone would tag themselves. Yeah. They were like, this is a big problem. The second part was WhatsApp. And this is the more, I think, interesting part of the complaint, which is that Facebook realized that messaging and communication at its core is what Facebook is all about. Mm. So they bought WhatsApp for m many, many more times, $1 billion, around $25 billion. And that was all, all of this was approved by the FTC. But what the complaint is now alleging is that Facebook is basically you, you doing these acquisitions as a monopolistic behavior in order to crush competition. And they have quite a bit of evidence in their complaint on WhatsApp. It's really stunning. They say that Facebook intentionally does not promote WhatsApp here in the United States so that WhatsApp does not cannibalize Facebook's core business. And having you know done some initial research on this myself, I know that Facebook is already concerned that they're losing users, quote unquote, to Instagram. But because the bottom line is that they own the same company, it doesn't really matter. And the impetus for all of this, and I think why we should all care, outside of just market reasons, is that a huge push by Mark Zuckerberg has been to integrate user data from all three of those products into a right. centralized database so in order to sell one product. to advertisers. Yes. yes. So they might feel different for you, but your ad targeting based on your WhatsApp usage, your Instagram usage, and your Facebook usage would all feed into the same database, meaning that they would have a holistic picture of uh, basically a holistic picture on you, even more so than they already do. Yeah, and I think, look, regular viewers yeah. of the show know what we basically think about yeah, this. We right. think that these companies are way too powerful. And all the ins issues of censorship, there's actually another story on about how YouTube's going to start taking down videos, right. uh, contesting the results of the presidential election. Right. So all these questions about censorship and specific issues of blocking this or that content and how things are ultimately like moderated on these platforms. The bigger context of that always is that these things are so giant and powerful that it matters so mm -hmm. much when YouTube makes that decision or when Facebook makes a decision about who to platform and who not to platform. So that's why these things are so incredibly significant. So According to the New York Times this morning, they kind of lay out some of the hurdles that are in place here and why this case will ultimately be a challenge, even though there is significant evidence, as you point out, um, to indicate that this is anti-competitive behavior and that Facebook should, in, ha in fact, be broken up. Number one is just the fact that courts are loath to break up companies. Yeah. They really haven't yeah. done it in a major way since right. AT&T when they break it up to the baby bells. Right. So that's one thing is they're just skittish about ultimately doing that. The second piece is that the sort of judicial standard for proving that this is negatively impacting competition is that consumer prices are going up. Well, obviously, these are all free services. Yes. So the price thing is sort of irrelevant, which makes it harder to have this just like hard and fast metric of, hey, if Facebook wouldn't didn't buy Instagram or if that hadn't been allowed to go through, would consumers be in a better position or not? So you have to go into this sort of like theoretical, hypothetical mm -hmm. land, which just makes it more challenging. Yeah, so um, and then the other piece of this, which is a bit of a hurdle, is like, look, these things were approved by the FTC under the Obama administration to start with. So you also have the added hurdle. That's not insurmountable, but you also have the added hurdle of saying, hey, why did you think that this was OK then? But now you're saying, no, 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 this was actually a 
problem. Yeah, and you can see that the last time that the U.S. government broke up a company was AT&T in 1984, so yes. 36 years ago. It's been a long time. And as you point out, there are a lot of false positives that you kind of have to prove in your case against Facebook. Right. This is going to be probably a multi-year battle in court that will not get resolved, if at all, in, I would say, like five years. The Microsoft case in the 1990s was one of the landmark cases uh, that last time happened in antitrust and was dropped by the Bush administration, surprise, surprise, uh, back in 2000. It's all politically dependent. And remember this, too. There are a lot of former Facebook people who work for Joe Biden. There are a lot of people with connections to tech, to the Internet Association, which is an Internet lobbying organization here in D.C. that work at highest, the highest levels of the Democratic Party. And now that they are in charge, and I think, you know, given that the FTC, who, again, Biden gets to a point who the head of these agencies are, yeah. I'm going to be watching this very closely. There's an immense amount of political influence that can be done here whether they strike a bargain, whether they actually strike for divestiture. These are not independent agencies in the way that you might think. So that is another thing to watch very closely. But regardless, a landmark moment in American business history. That yeah. we know for sure. This and the suit against Google are two of going to be two of the most closely watched cases in modern American history. And what happens with them will chart the course for how all of this moves exactly. forward. Do we have right. a different interpretation right. of antitrust that is more skeptical of these gigantic companies and mergers and their power in the marketplace? Facebook also, to be fair here, they argue, hey, you shouldn't just look at social media. Mm -hmm. You should look at entertainment. You should have this broader picture of the companies that we're in competition with. And from that perspective, it's a very healthy marketplace. So we'll see how the courts view all of this. That's right. It's going to be fun. Tomorrow on Rising, Democratic strategist Andrew Feldman and White House reporter for Politico, Gabby Oregon, and join us for the panel. Also, friend of the show, founder of the Daily Poster and editor at large of Jacobin, David Sirota is going to be here as well. And host of the Jimmy Dore show, Jimmy Dore. He's discussing how progressives can push Medicare for all through Congress. He has a plan for that. Remember to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Don't forget to like and share as well, and we will see you all tomorrow. Have a good one, guys.